Timothy, only an hour to church. What do you want for breakfast? Oh. Hi. Um, it's only nine o'clock. It's the time change. So you know, go, go get some coffee, <laughs> go get breakfast, and we'll see you in an hour.
Good morning and welcome to online worship here at St. James on the Feast of All Saints. We are so glad that you're here to worship with us. Our opening hymn today is Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. Please join in singing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly lo love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing the song of praise, the song of the three young men. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you've knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelations. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? And I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Our hymn in sequence is I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Please join us. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I have to tell you, after reading the text for today, I had some real questions about the world and the society we find ourselves living in today. I tried to take a hard look at just what seems to make most people happy. And I'm not sure if anyone really knows how to find said happiness. For instance, have any of you ever watched Survivor or Big Brother? Both of these reality shows attract millions of viewers around the world. In fact, I have to admit, I watch them both. If you've not seen them yet, you might want to just to get a perspective on just where society has gone. Big Brother is now on season 22 and Survivor on season 40. Imagine taking 25 people from totally different backgrounds and asking them to survive together while they are competing against each other for their own survival. At the end of each round, one person is voted out 
and the remaining go on. Alliances are made and broken through betrayal, which leaves everyone suspicious of the other's intent until there's only one person left. At the end, it's not because this person was nice or loving and caring that they win. It's because they were ruthless and hurtful and outplayed each other. Much like the political atmosphere we are in now. I don't know about you, but I find it upsetting that society has come to this. Who can backstab and connive their way through life the best? All for what? For happiness? In this context, we could possibly see that being happy or blessed is like this. Blessed are those who make big money. Blessed are the famous. Blessed are the ones who have hurt others. Blessed are the powerful. Or even this. Blessed are those who are ruthless and who will do anything to fulfill their dreams. I know that we all have our own dreams and aspirations for happiness. Because let's face it. All, we all want to be happy, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what is wrong is the way people often go about seeking this happiness. This is just what Jesus is talking about in the Sermon on the Mount. Our happiness, our blessedness. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the persecuted. When we look at these, one can only ponder and wonder, how can any of these be happy? After all, how can one who is poor in spirit be happy? Or for that matter, someone who is mourning. Humble people tend to spend time helping others and not taking care of themselves. Those who hunger for righteousness seem to spend all their time seeking social justice. And that seems to lead to little time for caring for themselves. And the persecuted, how can they possibly be happy? However, Jesus is inviting us into a new way of seeing just what this means. And that is by knowing God, being a part of God's family, and belonging to God's kingdom. This, however, is not always easy to see when much of our happiness revolves around having things. But it is these things that get in the way. Like enough money. What is enough? A roof over our head. How big is big enough? A car to get where we need to be. How nice of a car is enough. I heard this saying years ago when Owen and I were boaters. He who dies with the most toys wins. Everyone out on the lake seemed to be in direct competition with each other to see who had the bigger or the best boat. No one was ever happy with what they had, always trying to outdo each other. But if we listen close to the statements of Jesus, the facts are this. We do not find happiness by seeking happiness. It is through seeking and knowing God. Jesus is showing us that true happiness is only found in God. In our relationship with God and caring for ourselves and each other. And I think we here at St. James are doing this through our ongoing conversations, in phone calls to members of our congregation during this time of COVID separation, and our ongoing conversations as to where and what God is calling us in our ministries. I really like the translation of today's gospel from Eugene Peterson's The Message. 
And I quote, you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope with less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is your most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you have worked up a good appetite for God. God is food and drink and the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At that moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete and fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. So whether you have found God or God has found you, explore and discover that to a deeper level, your happiness, your blessedness. And now let us affirm our faith in the one from whom all blessings come. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the people. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of love, you gather us in spirit when we can meet, not meet in person. Be with Michael, our presiding bishop, and Bonnie, our bishop, our partner churches who worship around this diocese, our companion diocese in the Dominican Republic, and around the world. Teach your people to be a community of grace and witness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Your church is a place of relationship. We pray for all those who worship with us and support the ministry of St. James. We pray for our clergy, staff, and leadership. Give us understanding that we might care for each other with our whole hearts. Take away the things that keep us from godly union and concord and unite us in bonds of truth and peace and faith. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Your creation is a precious gift. Turn our hearts to use its resources wisely rather than hoarding them for our own selfish gain. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Your desire for us is peace. Lead us along paths of justice and give us delight in living with honor, 
and loving our neighbor. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Your ways are goodness and life. Free all those on our prayer list from illness, hurt, anxiety, or addiction. Help them become whole parts of your creation and fill them with your love. We especially lift up those we name now. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Your promise to us is resurrection. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and all those good things that we see we need. In the name of the one who shows us your love, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, O oh holy and life-giving God, we raise up all those members of our congregation and those buried from our congregation this year, giving thanks that we knew these saints on our earthly pilgrimage. We ask that they would know you in fullness now, that they have come to their eternal rest.
And now we welcome you to offer up your own names of those who you have loved, but see no longer. O oh God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of these, your servants, and grant them an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also so with you. Thank you. Again, I want to say good morning to all of our members and guests. We're so glad that you've chosen to be part of our worship today. As always, if you have questions, prayer requests, um, need help with technology, or any needs or concerns to share, we invite you to send them to prayer at stjamesbirmingham.org, the email address prayer at stjamesbirmingham.org. I hope you all know um, that this coming Tuesday is election day. I know many of you have already voted. Um, I want to remind you that voting is a Christian responsibility. We are called to engage with the world as it is, even as we work to make it better. We are not called to blindly be a part of one party or another, but to work together with people of every kind and lift up the goods of inclusion and unity and love for all people that the gospel calls us to. Your vote holds those in authority responsible and chooses what ideas and policies you believe may move our country in a Godward direction. Please don't forget to vote this year or at any time. Many of us are feeling anxious about this election. So we have a few things that we think might be helpful for you if that's, um, if that's where you find yourself. First, today at four o'clock um, this afternoon, the Episcopal Church will be streaming from its Facebook page an interfaith service um, called Holding On To Hope, a national service for healing and wholeness. The live stream service will gather Americans for prayer, song, lament, hope, and a call to love God and neighbor. If you choose to do this on the Episcopal Church's Facebook page, remember to bring a candle and have it nearby because lighting them together will be one of the ways that um, we participate in the service. Also this Tuesday on election day, your staff will be leading opportunities for prayer all day long um, on our Facebook page. Um, we start with morning prayer as we always do at eight o'clock and then at every hour on the half hour from 9 30 in the morning until 7 30 at night we'll be offering up prayers for our nation during this election we'll conclude with compline on zoom at eight o'clock if you need to find a center on what will be a difficult day for many people we encourage you to join us at any time when we go live for these short opportunities to offer up prayers and to ask for god's healing and wholeness for our country and for us as individuals. This week is also our final small group gathering. We'll be discussing how we think St. James is being called to build a part of God's dream in this world. We will gather this Thursday at seven o'clock on Zoom and you can find the links in both the bulletin and the light. A week from Monday on November 9th, there'll also be a drive up COVID testing and free flu shots for those who need it. If you would like to volunteer to help out, um, please contact me or Michelle Wagaman. Uh, we also could use masks to hand out at that time um, and food. And uh, food can be dropped off at the Gables house. And again, you can contact us to ask for, um, for any help in terms of um, finding that or what's needed. As I mentioned last week, we're again providing sandwiches each Saturday. And so we need people to sign up each week to help out. Um, we make the sandwiches either on Thursday evening or Friday morning, and you can 
um, sign up on the Sign Up Genius in the light. Uh, finally, our stewardship packets will be mailed out um, of starting um, a week from Monday. And we're asking for you to return your pledge cards to the office or fill out the pledge card online by November 22nd. Um, that's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Speaking of giving thanks, I am deeply thankful for this congregation and your deep generosity. I'm deeply thankful, as Patty mentioned, for the many ways that we are being blessed by God through how we bless one another. Your continued support for St. James is making a difference not just in our building, but in the lives of our members and so many people outside of our church. Thank you for the ways you love others. And may you walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice for the world. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Our Lord, give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, whose days are without end, and whose mercies cannot be numbered. Make us, we pray, deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life. And let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. That when we shall have served you in our generation, we may be gathered to our ancestors, having the testimony of a good conscience, in the communion of the Catholic Church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a religious and holy hope, in favor with you, our God, and in perfect charity with the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected, and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Siblings in Christ, at this time we are rightly separated one from another and unable to gather around the Eucharistic table to break bread and drink wine. And because it is the desire of God's people to participate more fully in the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us now invite our Savior more deeply into our hearts by praying a prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist has been and will be celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I explicitly ask you into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Help me see all the ways in which you are still available, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now please join in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honoring glory throughout all ages. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Now please join in singing our closing hymn, Give Thanks for Life, set to the same tune as for all the saints. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.